All right, so let's take a look at the first real example that we have in our notes. We have f of x is equal to 1 divided by the quantity x minus 3 squared minus 2. Now, one of the things that I want to point out to you here is the fact that we've got this square here in the denominator. By having that square, that tells me that we're going to be dealing with one of the one of those parent functions, and that's going to be the reciprocal squaring function. Okay, so remember the reciprocal function is that missed high five guy, but when it's a square, that is the volcano. Okay, so we know it's the volcano shape, and what you might want to do is just draw a little sketch of this guy. So we know it should look something like this. Again, that's not my final picture, that's just a, a rough estimate so that we know the shape. Where is that shape going to be located? Well, let's look inside and see. Inside this square, I see a minus 3. Now, the same rules for trends, for, for shifting graphs is still going to be the same here. So I hot over. If it's inside, that's a horizontal shift opposite of what you see. So I see a minus 3. I've got to do the opposite of that, which means I'm going to go horizontally to the right three units. And then there's minus two. So over, outside is a vertical shift exactly what you see. So I see a minus two. Vertically, that means I'm going to go down two units. So let's do that. And when we do this, remember how before we grabbed a new x and new y axis? We're going to do the same thing here, except the new x and y axes actually are our asymptotes. So if I go down two, I'm going to have this horizontal line right here because I shifted down to going to the right three is going to be this vertical asymptote right here. So that's shifting to the right three and down two. Now unlike most of the parent functions that we've seen so far, we don't put a key point here at the origin, at this new origin, because these these rational functions don't have that because at zero you're undefined. But if we're going to be plotting this shape, let's remember the key points and let's plot those guys accordingly. So really, if, if this were a multiple choice uh, quiz or a multiple choice question on your homework, you would know volcano shape shifted to the right three and down two, and it would be easy to pick that off. But if we have to graph by hand, it's a little bit more difficult. So the key points are going to be, let's mark this out. So you've got 0, 1, and 2. The easiest guy is 1, because 1 is going to kick out a 1. 2, well, you have to do the reciprocal and you have to square. So let's see, 2 squared is 4, and the reciprocal is 1 fourth. And you've got the 1 half, and 1 half reciprocal is 2, squared is 4. And so these are the key points that you're going to have here. Now, if you remember, when we were doing these in the last video, here is that shape, right? So we're taking this and we're going to slide it to the right three and down two. But notice that there's symmetry here. There is symmetry about the y-axis, so we're going to use that to help us out in this picture. So if I've got these points here that I remember from those key points, I can copy them on the other side. So negative one-half is going to be up four units. Negative 1 is going to give me 1, and negative 2 is going to give me 1 fourth. And so having those key points and having that line of symmetry allows me to quickly graph the other half of this function. So you just have to make sure you draw a nice, smooth curves through all of this, and we won't have any problems. Now keep in mind that you are getting closer and closer and closer to that, but it it's never supposed to touch. Now, granted, it looks like it's touching on my graph. I'm, I'm trying my best not to, but again, in terms of infinitesimally small things, they would never touch. So, here's your graph. Now, before we move on and go on to a different example, let's just answer some very quick questions about this. Number one, what is the domain? Now, the domain should have been everything but zero, but you see here that I shifted to the right three units, so that's going to accordingly shift my domain. So my domain is everything except for, look at this, if I plug in positive three, that gives me a problem. 
and you see that corresponds to this vertical asymptote right there. So my domain is everything except for 3. So it's negative infinity to 3 union positive 3 to positive infinity, like that. My range. So my range is supposed to be going from bottom to top. The lowest this guy gets is negative 2. So it's from negative 2 to infinity. Let's see, what else can we answer about this? Well, we can answer questions about the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Those are very easy questions to ask. You're going to see this stuff come up in the My Math Lab homework questions. So, you have something like this. What is the horizontal asymptote, which I'm just going to abbreviate as HA? It would have been y equals 0, but what did you do? Well, you went down to, so that means that horizontal asymptote is now y equals negative 2. And you can't just say negative 2. Asymptotes are equations. They're, they're, they're lines, so you have to represent them using an equation. Your vertical asymptote, well, it was x equals 0, but you shifted that to the right three units, and so that now takes on the equation of the vertical line x equals positive 3. And you can see how this corresponds to the gaps that we have here in the domain. This domain had a gap at 3, at x equals 3, right? And your range went almost all the way down to negative 2, so that's y equals negative 2. Another piece, another couple of pieces we can ask. Where are you increasing and where are you decreasing? So let's look at this. As I trace my finger along this function, am I increasing or decreasing? Well, as I go from left to right, you see that I go up. I hit my vertical asymptote, and then I trace, and I'm going down. So the open interval over which I'm increasing is going to be from the left, negative infinity, to the right when I get to an x value of 3. So that's where I'm increasing. And then if I were to ask, where are we decreasing? We are decreasing the rest of the way, starting from 3 and going to the right toward infinity. So here's, here are all the key pieces of information that we have about this graph. We've got the domain, the range, the asymptotes, and where we're increasing and decreasing. And a pretty nice looking graph.